welcome to 10 iPad Tips and Tricks. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at 10 of my favorite iPad tips and tricks. Now, this is really about iPad running iOS 7, and since it's iOS 7, you have iOS 7 on your iPhone and iPod Touch, and many of these tips, although some of them are iPad exclusive, many of them will work on your iPhone and iPod, iPod Touch as well. So let's jump in. What's my first tip? My first tip has to do with the iPad. It's a physical button on the side here, and it can be up or down. But what's it do? Well, that depends on you. What do you want it to do? There's two choices. If I go into my settings, there is a use side switch to your choice, lock rotation or mute. Now, why is there a choice for that one hardware button? That, that's because when the iPad first came out, that button did lock rotation. And then along the way, Apple changes it to do mute. And then people that liked lock rotation screamed and then Apple then made a preference. So that's why you get to choose. So right now I've got it set to lock rotation. And since it is up, if I turn my screen, my screen does turn. However, if I enable lock rotation, whichever orientation I'm in, it is now locked. So even if I rotate my iPad, nothing changes until I move the switch. Now, of course, I could toggle it to be mute and have it do the same thing, but here's a bonus tip, is the reason I don't need it on mute is because I have, first of all, two ways to get to mute. Number one, just simply holding the down volume button on the side will quickly jump to mute. So if you hold it down like for two seconds, it's on mute. The other reason is that even if I didn't do the hardware button, maybe we'll turn the volume back up again, but even if I didn't do the hardware button, uh, there's a control center, and the control center will be the opposite of whichever one you've got it set to. So since I've got it set to lock rotation, the control center will do mute. So if I swipe up from the bottom of the screen, that will give me the control center, and on the right-hand side, that button right there is mute. If I were on lock rotation, if I had the button set to mute, then that would be lock rotation. So whichever one you've got it set to, the opposite is in the control center. So that's your first tip and a bonus tip. Uh, tip number two has to do with folders. Now, uh, again, this is not new. Uh, you've been able to create folders for a long time on iOS, but iOS 7 does bring a new caveat to it. Number one, a lot of people don't realize that uh, since you, on the iPhone, typically you only have space for, uh, I believe it's four icons, five icons at the bottom on the home bar. Well, iPad, since there's more room, you can have more things down there. So I've got six in this case. And you see the last two are folders. Now, how do you make a folder? Well, easy. If I want, for example, to combine my uh, reminders and notes into one folder, all I have to do is drag one, hold down the button, or I'm sorry, hold down the, your finger on the icon, and then drag it on top of the other one. And that will create a folder that will give you a name that you can change. You can tap in the name, and if you don't want that to be productivity, you can delete it, and you can change it to, for example, uh, here we'll do the shift, to do. So that's my new to do folder. And if I tap out of it and press the home button, I've got a folder there. Now, if I go in and I hold down any icon again to get back to the organization, I can, first of all, I can rearrange them. If I drag, there we go. Rearrange them in the order that I want. You also notice that you can now swipe between different screens in a folder. That's new in iOS 7. So if I want this to be on the next screen, I just drag over, let go. Now there's one on one screen, one on the other. If I want it to be, go back, just drag it to the edge until it comes back and then let go. So now instead of it, your folder being limited to nine or 12 icons, it can have as many apps as you want from screen to screen. You can only have still nine at a time, but it can be nine or 12 or I'm sorry, nine, nine at a time that you can toggle between the different screens. And now your folders aren't limited by a certain number of icons. So that's folders. Now, if you wanna get rid of a folder, just drag everything out of it. If I drag that out of it, and then drag the last thing out of it, the folder will automatically go away because there's nothing left. And then if you um, are done rearranging, you've done put, putting things in the order you want them in, just simply press the home button, uh, that little physical button on, uh, at the bottom of your iPad or on the right, that will um, turn off the organization. So now you're back to everything is locked in place where you left it. 
All right, tip number three. If you want to launch an app, we just talked about folders, you can go find the app you want and tap into the folders until you find the one you want. But what if you just don't remember where you put it? You know it's on your iPad, but you need it quickly. Well, from any screen, any home screen, if you swipe down, so just pull down in the middle of the screen, that'll pull up the search bar. And you can search for all kinds of things on your iPad, contacts, notes, whatever, and also apps. So apps. So if I'm looking for the Pages app, just keep typing the word Pages until it comes up. Since I searched for it recently, it's at the top of the list. But if I now tap, it will launch that app no matter where it was on my computer. All right, so, or on my iPad. So next, uh, tip number four, and that is the split keyboard. So how does a split keyboard work? Well, you can do it two ways. There's a button at the bottom right-hand corner. That's your dismiss keyboard. And of course, tap to bring your keyboard back up. And of course, uh, if you hold that down, it will give you a choice of split. And that will split your keyboard and, and dock it. So now we can get, the, get to that um, split keyboard another way, actually using gestures. I just put it back together using a gesture. And of course, to pull it apart, I'm just using my thumbs and pulling. So I'll just pull it apart and that will give me my uh, split screen keyboard. Now, of course, I can drag it up and down on that keyboard button. So if I want it more at the top so that I can type uh, at the bottom of the document or at the bottom, I can do that. And if I drag it down to the bottom, it will automatically dock it and put it, merge it back together. If I don't want to do it with gestures, I can always do it from the uh, menu or from the button. So if I go in and say dock and merge, that's the same thing as dragging it down to dock and merge it together. All right, so the split keyboard, that is an iPad exclusive, so that doesn't work on the phone or the iPod touch. Next up, um, the emoji keyboards. So those little cool characters, you know, smiley faces, roses, flowers, um, buildings, all kinds of emoji icons. How do you get those? Well, you used to have to download an app to get those. Now they're actually built into iOS. So if I go to my settings and I go to uh, keyboard, under keyboards, right now it says I have one, meaning my English keyboard. If I tap on that, I can now add a new keyboard. So let's say I like to tap in um, English and Chinese, which I don't, but let's say I do. Then I can have the Chinese keyboards as well. But if I scroll, there's a keyboard called emoji. And if I add the emoji keyboard, now that keyboard is accessible in, in any application I'm typing in. So if I go back to pages, we'll just double tap the home key to multitask, and I uh, wanna put an emoji character there, you'll now notice that because I have two or more keyboards, you have a globe button. That globe button lets you toggle between your various keyboards. So I have the English keyboard and the emoji keyboard. I wanna put an emoji symbol in, just tap the symbol and then switch back to the alpha keyboard or English keyboard. So that is number five, the emojis. Now, number six is actually one of my favorites and I use this probably more often on the iPhone, but um, of course you can use it on the iPad as well and that's shortcuts. If you do a lot of typing, but you don't like to do a lot of typing, then shortcuts is gonna be great. Let's go back to the settings and we're gonna go back to keyboards where we were and you'll notice under keyboards, there's shortcuts. And what shortcuts allows me to do, you can kind of see what's going on here. This is what I would type and it would spell out this. So I don't, I definitely don't recommend texting and driving. And this is why I created this is, I'm gonna pull over, type DRV, which means I'm driving right now. We'll, we'll get back to you as soon as I can. In other words, stop texting me because I can't drive and text at the same time. So if I wanna create one of these, and this is a bonus tip. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. So let's go ahead and say, add a new shortcut. And let's say you want to type in your email address, which you have to do over and over and over again on the web and documents. You're just typing that long email address. So let's pretend my email address is terry at really long domain dot com. That's what I really don't like to type over and over again, as you might imagine. So let's do the shortcut. Now, what do I want to type that's quick? 
but I can't put in something that would be real, something that I would type in a word or part of a word. So what I wouldn't type is T, T, T. I'm never gonna type three T's together in any word. So if I type T, 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 that means put in my email address. So let's do it, save, and let's switch back over to pages so we can test it out and just simply turn off shift lock, T, 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 space, there's my really long email address. So you can do anything you want. It could be a sentence like I did the drive thing. So if I return down, I type DRV, I'm driving now, we'll respond as soon as I can. As soon as you hit the space bar, it's like an autocorrect. So you're basically making your own autocorrects and it could be sentences, it could be just a word, it could be anything as long as you want it to be, just type in a few letters and you will get that autocorrect or that shortcut. Number seven. Now let's say I wanna put in a photo. Now, of course, I can you know, go copy and paste, and I'm sure there's an insert or add photo here uh, icon, and here it's ask, asking for access to my photos, and there they are. However, what if the photo I took is not here? Let's say it's on my iPhone. Well, let's bring up the iPhone and let's try this out. There's the photo that I want. It's the clouds photo, and I want to go ahead and share that with you right now. So here, let's uh, rearrange these screens a little bit here. I'm gonna make the iPhone a little smaller. Simply drag that down, let's put this over here. And the photo I want is this photo right here. So I'm just gonna say, share it. And it's gonna ask me, do I wanna share this moment or just share some photos? And I just wanna share some photos. Now I wanna share that one. Now, before I tap the share button, I wanna share this via a feature called AirDrop. And AirDrop allows me to wirelessly send and receive data from one iOS device to another. It could be a picture, it could be a contact, it could be a note, it could be whatever app supports AirDrop. So in order to do this on my iPad, I'm gonna bounce out of this for a second, bring up the control center. And in the control center, you'll notice that there is AirDrop at the bottom. So I'm just gonna tap AirDrop and I'm gonna say that I want to be able to receive AirDrop from just my contacts or we can say everyone. So I wanna receive AirDrop from everyone and now that means that that will show up on my iPhone. So now I'll just go ahead and say that I want to um, share this and it's gonna ask me how and in a few seconds you'll notice the AirDrop icon shows Terry, meaning that's my iPad that it's showing right there. So yes, I wanna share this with Terry. So I tap Terry and it just popped up a message on the iPad saying, hey, somebody named Terry White wants to share a photo with you. Do you want it? Yes, I do. And that will wirelessly transfer even if we're not on a network, even if we're just standing next to each other at a bus stop, we can actually share content between each other. Now that we have the photo, let's go out of this to our camera roll. We can switch back. And now let's go in and uh, go back to that particular document and we can say insert, and we can go grab that photo from the camera roll and insert it right into our picture. So there's a picture that was taken with the iPhone and transferred wirelessly using AirDrop from the iPhone over to the iPad. So that was tip number seven, transferring. Tip number eight, you notice that we've scrolled down this document, we're near the end now, and I wanna quickly get back up to the top. This is a long-standing old iOS tip, and it is simply tap the time or the top of the uh, iPad screen to quickly scroll back up to the beginning. So whenever you're in a long document, long web page, long whatever, just simply, here we'll scroll up, and I don't wanna to have to scroll, 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 scroll to get back up to the top, just tap the time, and that will take me all the way back up to the top even on uh, iPhones and iPod Touch as well. All right, number nine. And number nine deals with typing in web addresses. So I'm gonna go to Safari for this. So let's uh, multitask over to Safari. I've got Safari already running here. And I wanna type in a web address. And I know the web address ends in .edu. Let's pretend. So let's say I wanna type in Wayne State University. And I don't, actually know their email, their uh, their web address, but let's say it's Wayne State. Now again, I know it would probably be wsu.edu or wayne.stateuniversity.edu, but let's pretend this is it. How do I get the edu? Well, 
Apple used to have a .com key on the keyboard. At least that would get me .com, right? Well, the .com button is still there. It's just no longer spelled out as .com. The period key actually will take you to where the um, subdomains or domains that you want to get to. So, for example, if I, um, or suffix, suffixes. So if I hold down the period, it will not only give me .com, but I can switch over or drag over to edu. And now that will put edu where I was typing. So whenever you're in a web or internet or email type keyboard situation, usually where you've got the at key or maybe you will see the .com on certain keyboard layouts. But even if you don't, wherever you are typing internet addresses in an internet app, that's when you'll be able to see that um, period switch over to edu.com, .org, so forth and so on. So tip number 10, last one. Let's go to our settings and let's enable, let's get out of keyboard. Let's go back to general settings and you notice there's one called multitasking gestures. And it says use four or five fingers to pinch the home screen, swipe up to multi for multitasking or swipe left or right between apps. So that's four fingers or five and it will do those things. So let's do turn it on. And what does that mean? Well, that means now if I just put four fingers on the iPad and swipe up. That'll bring up multitasking. Then I can, of course, go to the app that I want. If I just hold four fingers down and swipe left or right, there we go. We're swiping between apps. Oops, I've gone as far over as I can. So swiping back to Safari, swiping over to settings, so forth and so on. So that is multitasking gestures, an iPad exclusive, um, built in using four fingers. And I guess they made an exclusive to the iPad because your phone wouldn't be big enough to swipe with that many fingers at the same, at the same time. So there you have it, 10 of my favorite iPad tips and tricks. And of course, many of those will work on the iPhone and iPod Touch, and most of those are now iOS 7 exclusives. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.